Good afternoon, Cloud Community, and welcome back to Denver, Colorado. My name is Savannah Peterson here, joined by John Furrier for day two yeah. of Boomi World 2024. It's been a really cool yeah. show so far. I mean, Boomi has been has great customers, they've got great software, and we're going to hear more about how those acquisitions are rolling out on the big keynote today. It's great news. Yeah, a lot of great news. Speaking of, we've got Ron John and Ann here. We've got Apika and Boomi. You were on stage earlier, Ann. Yes. First of all, welcome, both of you. Thank you for taking the time. And can you give us a little recap of that awesome keynote that you did earlier? Sure, and just to, just to clarify, our C CEO did a keynote, <laughs> uh, Steve <laughs> Lucas, so I won't take the cre his credit. Yeah. Um, I did come on board um, on you stage. You were on there, that I counts. Was on stage, yeah. Yeah. Sure. I was going to say, come on, I think Steve would want to. Yeah. You I did was, the demos, were yeah, great. Exactly. I did the demo, so I was like, yeah, the demo monkey. But we're like co leading Steve is, there for a nice trip yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, yeah, we're, we're pretty excited here at Boomi. We have had such amazing innovation and growth over the last few years, and that's one of the things Steve was talking about, like that power connectivity, how as humans we've been drawn, and that endurance of connectivity, but also through our platform, we've been able to accelerate and help through the digital connection, connectedness. And now we're seeing AI, AI coming on board and it's really putting a lot of fire into spaces like data management and API yeah. management and processes and applications that we know are just proliferating at breakneck speed. So we're advancing our vision and our platform in those areas and we made some pretty exciting announcements today about um, our AI, API solution. You got great M&A going on, you got organic innovation on the product side, we've been covering you guys for many years. We, great product, love the interface by the way, because it always did great on the interface, a lot easier to use. That is so good to hear, because that has been, that was of old, I probably shouldn't say this, but a complaint that we used to get, so it was yeah. like, they're telling us our baby's ugly, you know, we didn't like it. Well, so. compared to some ugly babies out there, I've seen some <laughs> yeah. other model gardens and some other gardens. With, but now it's just like uh, yeah. you saying your baby's beautiful, so you, thank you. you do. I'm very <laughs> impressed. And the demos are fantastic. It's a great innovation. M&A brings on a new category, setting the table for the, for the innovation that's going to come with the new category of generative AI. Customers have their own workflows, they have their own data, that's the new IP, we've been reporting that. But also the ecosystem, we did this little um, Savannah on the street reporting yesterday to some of your partners, you guys are here. The partnership ecosystem is, is booming, pun intended, nice because, one, nice because, <laughs> because of the integrations of team sport. Yes. So could you guys explain the partnership piece and how that's working because this will be table stakes, having great partnerships in the Gen AI era. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I'll talk a little bit about the partnership that uh, Apika is doing with Boomi. Uh, so Apika is a data management uh, platform and uh, the partnership with Boomi is in particularly about observability data that we manage through our platform. Uh, it, it's an offering called Runtime Observability. Uh, it works with existing Boomi environments, so customers are already you know, running workflows. Uh, and true to you know, the, the mission of uh, uh, Boomi, we just connect everyone to everything. Today, customers run complex workflows on critical mission critical applications inside the Boomi platform. What we are offering as part of RTO is the ability to now look inside these environments where you know, we gather met metrics around health and performance to make sure that these critical systems are always up and running. So, so RTO is runtime observability. Observability, Okay, so make sure yeah. you get that done. Yes. Define that for us. What is runtime observability? Let's set the context up because this becomes a really interesting piece for what is turning out to be a real-time market with Gen AI, because it's generating things. It's yeah. not like some program response. It's like generating at runtime. Yeah. So take us through what is runtime observability? Yeah, so, we, we, so runtime observability is a little bit different than pure Gen AI. This is more around very operational bread and butter stuff. So you, know, you take a Boomi platform, you're running critical workloads, you're running it on servers, virtual machines. You need to make sure these are running at all times. Right? There is no downtime, there is no impact to services, there's no impact to users. Now, ensuring that requires a couple of things. Right, One is Boomi application itself giving insights, which they have in the form of Boomi insights, but RTO now giving them insights into the runtime environment, where you, know, you may be running the application in a Linux machine or a Windows machine. You want to see exactly what's happening, happening inside the operating system. Uh, things like network performance, you know, memory usage, CPU usage, storage, file system. Gather all of that in a way that it's streamlined, centralized, makes it easy for somebody to know what is working, what is failing, are the failures coming from the application stack or is it coming from the runtime stack? And that, what that means is, mean time to root cause really comes down. So that is our you know, fundamental 
uh, offering in RTO. It's a it's really a complement to Boomi Insights, which is insights into their application. And what's what's the impact of Boomi? They see you see stuff that they don't see, or in their app. Yeah, we Explain see that stuff, unpack yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we see stuff that is more inside the runtime environment, uh, and uh, which is which is not available through, say, the Boomi APIs or the Boomi uh, user interface, but is still critical for somebody to ensure that this is running up, up and running at all times. Right? So. And the benefit to the Boomi customer is <laughs> More visibility uh, into what's happening, or well, um, there, as as you mentioned, there's critical systems that are running yeah. on Boomi, and you know we, we say we run on anything anywhere. So any device that has that's a, one of the specialties of the, our patented runtime. It can run absolutely anywhere. So we're collecting all that information and we're passing that information. We're doing the integrations. That's what's keeping that company running. You know, parts of their business are functional because they're running. So if those go down, that's problematic. With this technology here with our partners, they're able to provide insights, collecting a lot of the audit logs, collecting a lot of the information from the atoms themselves and the molecules, and being able to report out insights to help improve operational efficiency, to help improve um, how things are running, but also maybe predict what could be an issue yeah. later to make sure that everything hums. So they're, they're set up, if I translate yeah. that into, into what it means for say Gen AI is that the data is all there. Mm -hmm. So the data is kind of accessible. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to connect the dots going forward. Okay, yeah. I got a good operational uh, efficiency, I'm seeing things, I got predictive analytics, good old school. Yeah, if, you, yeah, if, last if, your, year's run time, <laughs> if your run time's not running, you're not getting that data <coughs> as quickly. Like let's say it's yeah. an event um, and that data needs to come in real time. Um, it's a real time event. If, you're, if your run time is down, then you're not going to be able to get access to it, just like if your API is down. So this is a, a way of making sure everything under the covers is working really well. And working most efficiently all the time. I mean, it's essentially saving you money and optimizing your throughput and productivity at, at its simplest, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, Absolutely, yeah. And who doesn't want to do that? <laughs> yep. Check utilization, that sort of thing. You know, our, we have customers who are using more and more. Um, mm -hmm. Steve mentioned it in his keynote, like more and more processing every single day, like an incredible amount of transactions. So you can start to see, well, am I reaching the, the, the you know, the peak of my optimizing in this environment? Do I need to scale out? You know, maybe they become so efficient they need to ramp down on certain things and they get savings there. So these are the type of insights that are super powerful, in, especially in our, our world of AI, where we know data is going to go up, the need to integrate yeah. is going to go up, the need to manage is going to go up. It's nice when a plan comes together. I got to <laughs> ask you about the iPass market because Boomi has been on the right track and, and apps are involved, so they don't, you got to manage all the runtime, all that good stuff. Now that you've got the generative AI, how's that next gen going to look? Because if you have iPads, which we are on our research team, we're showing that it's going to be a compound annual growth rate about 35%, just in the traditional integrated platform as a service market, just straight up iPads. Mm -hmm. Now you got net new capabilities with the API management, you got the trusted brokering with the data piece, with, with, the, with the compliance and governance. Where does this go? What is this, what changed with iPass? I was just talking to an investor, so I uh, floating in the hallways, he's like, what's the TAM for, for Boomi? I'm thinking that with your positioning, your TAM will increase from iPass, or what's that next market, or can you share your vision on what Steve was getting at on yeah, stage Yeah, what Steve was getting at is that we still have integration, teledata integration automation as our core functioning pillar, but we also do data management, and we also do API management. We're investing heavily in these adjacent technologies to not just be a part of Boomi um, integration, but to be standalone, rich services in and of themselves. So what we're seeing is that I think iPaaS today is a core function. It's no longer if, it's when. Yeah. You know, you, you must use it today. There's just no, absolutely no way you would go back and try to do manual integrations anymore. It's yeah. just, you could not work at that pace. Yeah. So we're saying like, the, the data management is going to become a very key aspect because data is a fuel for AI. And garbage in, garbage out, if your yeah. data is not good. And, and I also think that data, the, the role of data will be like a force multiplier in AI. So as bad as your data is today, Bad, bad. You Order of magnitude. Right. Exactly. With each level and, and, and evolution, either whether that's a new tool, new tech, or, or at a different scale for a different solution, it just gets messier yeah. and more expensive. Right. And you know, extremely it, fast. And also, the garbage in, garbage out, that's because you're talking about processes there, right? Yeah. So there's process yeah, in the yeah. middle. It's using that data to come through. Do you want to introduce rust and, you know, 
dirt into your beautiful yeah. processes, why would you do that? Yeah. You're just going to create, you know, and so you, that full smoke probably will make you need to have better data. And you mentioned you can run anywhere with Boomi. Obviously, let's take this to the next level with API management and you, and you get the partnerships. When you think about cloud, cloud operations, you got on-premises, you got public cloud and edge all emerging. You have different clouds, different environments. Is the idea to be a, a agnostic, unified layer around this piece? Because some API gateways, this is, there's tool sprawl out there. Um, or, and 85% of all tr internet traffic is API traffic. So it's a natural evolution to say LLMs and foundation models will interface through, say, APIs. APIs. Mm -hmm. So the flip of the script is coming. Or is it? You Tell know, us through what's happening. I think you're absolutely spot on. So yes, the, the, the platform, the environment, is must be composable and it must be agnostic, in my opinion. If you create an ecosystem where, I'm not going, I'm going to try not to use an example. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> like, it's okay, we're you, we, we like it. <laughs> and whatever you, you say, create, we're Your safe with us and you everyone watching. You create an app <laughs> ecosystem that means that you have to use a technology that fits with that ecosystem, you're tying your customers and your partners to potentially inferior technologies. We believe best of breed. Use whatever best works for you in your business. We will be the glue that holds it together and we will help you manage it and we will help you um, extend it through APIs as well. That's the, the whole concept of composability and, agno and agnostic in nature. We won't call out any of the customers you can't call out <laughs> just because of that, but, I'm, but I am curious, you see customers, both of you do, across different verticals, uh, feels like the whole world is trying to adopt AI in a way that's efficient and quick and actually practical at, at, at this stage. What are some of the other trends that you're seeing that maybe are either industry specific or that go across verticals? I'm going to start with you. Yeah, so I think one of the things that we are noticing is around data engineering and really an openness there is, is becoming more and more critical because, and this is my view on it, is I think the integrations is the new cloud. That's what is happening. Uh, and, That's good, I like that. Right? Integrations <laughs> is the new cloud. Yeah. Uh, and powering all of that has to be good data. Right? And the more data gets locked down, the less valuable it gets. So openness on the data side, whether it's consumption, collection, storage, is something that we are seeing enterprises demand more and more, right? And so that's, that's what I see as another trend is data needs to be open on all fronts. Collection, consumption, storage, right? Well, the open source market's definitely pointing in that direction. You look at yeah. all the, uh, just on the foundation models alone, including the LLMs, open source, both velocity of adoption and size and performance is matching up with the proprietary models on, in open source. So you're starting to see Llama, Llama 3 coming out, that was killer reviews. That's open source, so then you got the, the proprietary one. So as this comes together, they're going to have a lot of errors. So you know, we reported on SiliconANGLE and our CUBE research team this power law, and we, we said a year ago that specialty models would become the, the, the core, where companies, their own version of their data, that's well understood and, and frankly accurate, it's their data. Mm -hmm. It's proprietary to them, hence their new landscape property. So uh, do you guys agree that customers' workloads and data is their new intellectual property? Because if what you're saying here is that if you can automate that, you're going to turn that into new value, potentially if you have this to the next level in the automation. So how should companies be, first of all, do you agree with that statement that that's intellectual property of the company? And two, what should companies do to one, not blow the opportunity <laughs> of harvesting that value? Um, what can they do to make sure that they preserve that opportunity? Yeah, well, I, I think we, we mentioned garbage in, garbage out. We mentioned the garbage. But if your data is good, that force multiplier is great, right? So as you said, orders of yeah. magnitude better. And how do you make sure that you can take the richness of data that belongs to your business and that can give you that edge over your competitors? How do you do that? Um, well, we, we're we looking at this concept of data management. That was the other piece Steve talked about on stage today. Yeah. And the data management sphere of taking your multiple disparate data sources, combining that data together so you can find the golden source, um, the golden record in that, and then be able to leverage those insights in other parts of your business so you can get better and better and better. That's how innovation is born. It's being able to see something other people can't see. But people have data in their environment today that they can't see. 
or they have uh, insights or nuggets of beautiful information or yeah. um, you know a advantages that they're not they're not privy to because they just don't they have it in so many different places. Yeah. So that's what what we think is create that kind of data reservoir <laughs> that we spoke about earlier, yeah. where you're yeah. combining the data that sits in your environment, protected within your your virtual private cloud or your your firewall or whatever, the data that you have, keep it keep it secure, but leverage that to create so that when, business. So advantage. you're saying optimize for data cleanliness up front versus optimizing the managing of the cleanup if it gets dirty or gets, it's bad data, because bad data is hallucinations and or critical failure in an application, right? Yeah, so I think the, the one aspect here is it's not always that data has to be cleansed. The most important thing from a compliance perspective is data has to be in full fidelity as you collected it. Right Now, the views on that can change over time. I mean, today I may take care of 10 attributes from it, tomorrow I may need 50 attributes from it. It's the data engineering that ensures this over time where these views can change and seamlessly connect into systems where they need it the most, I think is where the future is. Do you think data engineering is going to be a bigger position in companies, or is that going to be a position that's going to be human plus AI together, or both? What's your view oh, on data engineering? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think data engineering will become kind of, the, and, and things like AI and analytics will get joined at the hip in some ways. Because there is no gen AI without good quality data engineering, right? Uh, and that's where data management, API integrations, these will become more and more critical. And that has to first come together before you can power gen AI use cases, right? So. I think so there's going to be a democratization yeah. of data roles. So uh, as you're able to collect insights, people in different parts of business will be able to see patterns that data engineers may not necessarily see because they're, they're not, they don't have that lens of finance or that lens of customer marketing or sales that, that, that you're bringing to the fore. So it's a really great way of saying if you could create these insights in a data reservoir or whatever, data lake, you yeah. know, whatever your choice is, and be able to surface up those insights so people can find their own and be able to slice and dice using, say, Gen AI, that, to me, I think is pretty so You're describing an operating system, essentially, a systems architecture that's going to enable value from the creators themselves, the creative workers or the productivity side of it. Well, and from, yeah. and from the different subject yeah. matter experts within an organization. What I'm hearing from you yeah. is, you know, if, if I'm a, a pediatric nurse, for example, I might be able to think about data from a different question mm -hmm. or, or ask my AI or my, my situation a different question than if I'm in, you know, cardiology or if I'm on the admin yeah. side of the, you know, the diabetic wing or whatever the whatever it might be. But to your point, it's allowing, the, I, I love what you just brought up. I think that's an extraordinarily pivotal point, we talk about the democratization of AI a lot, but we talk about it as a access for entrepreneurs or for other people, but it's beyond that. It's, it's, it's empowering people across the business to be able to ask questions of the internal systems and data that's within those systems that they weren't able to ask before because to your point, you couldn't see the dark murky corner of the lake and yeah. you didn't know it was over there underneath the little yeah, sea and cave. Yeah, it's, like it's an overwhelming thing. I'm going to have to go yeah. into Power BI now. Am I, you know, so I think, Savannah, you, you just explained it incredibly well. And we do have a customer um, that that is that has been using um, Boomi systems for some time, and they they run um, where uh, greenhouses, and the greenhouses are very um, digital. So they have like little sensors on their plants and stuff, and they have growers, and they were able to maximize the growers um, associated with each certain level of crop. So they had few growers, and they could manage more crops because they were using the data coming in. And, and I remember a comment made by, I think their CEO, who said, our growers are now becoming green data scientists or something like that. <laughs> so like they're, they're yes. able to use yeah. this information, say yeah. oxidation levels, hydration, whatever, and be able to tweak yeah. how they're managing their crops by using the data. And the more they learned about it, the more they could ask questions, like they you can said. Grow, grow your own, as they say, with the good data. Yeah, yeah you can. Yeah. I think I, I want to sit here just for a second because I think it's it's really important, and in, and I think this is part of how we make AI real. It's how we make some of these new technologies real is by making not not that the AI is going to take their job, but that it's going to make everyone's job involve this as a tool in a really empowering and exciting way. So you mentioned the the growers turning into data engineers to a degree, yeah. uh, green green data engineers. I, I, when I was doing my homework on you, I love that we're both Washington Huskies, go dogs. <laughs> yes, and I also like that you came back and studied com computing and IT a little bit after you had gotten your original degree from UW. 
This is obviously a really exciting time in, in tech, huge hype curve moment. What would be your advice to someone, and I want to hear this from both of you because you're both seeing a lot of different things. What would be your advice to someone who's, who's hearing all the excitement and buzz right now, wants to upskill, maybe wants to come work for a company like Apica or Boomi? What would you tell them? Anne, I'm going to start with you. I'm, I'm always going to say this. Follow your passion, follow what interests you. So I actually studied engineering and um, well, I got a degree in psychology because I wanted to play in the sun. You know what it's like in Seattle. Um, and I was stuck in a dark physics basement for so long. I'm like, I just want to finish. So I went and got a degree in psychology. <laughs> I and, um, what I, mean, I, I studied <laughs> communications pretty much for the yeah. same reason. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but I, I went and I, to cognitive psychology. What I was fascinated by was how the brain memory gets stored. And if you think about it, what I've noticed is patterns between how brain and memory is stored and how AI works. So if you follow your passion, things start to come together. Mm -hmm. The patterns start to come together. And I thought my background in, a, in psychology, in cognitive psychology, and understanding of memory systems has really helped me understand the future of technology and computing and how computing systems and work systems. in And systems. Two yeah. different systems. Just yeah. one's a little silicon powered and one's a little, you know, emotionally powered. I, I think that. you can strive to be the absolute best at what you do if you're working in something you enjoy. And that's what I've always followed. It's a tough act to follow. Do you have anything you want? To yeah, I mean, uh, so a couple of things. Right? I mean, passion is definitely something that drives you to do the things that you really care about and figure out what you're good at, you know, double down on that. Uh, and one thing that I've learned over the years is always be a student because there is always something new happening out there. Uh, and if you are curious at all times, if you're willing to pick up on new things, you will evolve with how the world is evolving in a positive way, right? And, and that's, at the end of the day, we need to be students all our life. And, and that, that's the best way I think uh, anybody can kind of fulfill their ambitions, their you know, aspirations in terms of what they want to do in their life. So. I love, love that. that. Stay curious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know I speak for John and I when we both say we've enjoyed learning from both of you today. And Ron, John, thank you so much for being here with us. We look forward to seeing how the partnership evolves as things continue to build momentum and hearing where you're off at at the next Boomy World. John, thank you for hanging out. This was a great My little pleasure. chat. I know. So it's always great. insightful. I love when we get to learn from the guests and, and, uh, and get some definitions for the Cube's AI, like runtime yeah. observability. That's great. And thank all of you for tuning in wherever you are on this beautiful earth. We're here in Denver, Colorado. It's day two of Boomy World 2024. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news. We like to add one layer of difficulty just at the very end. Oh, we get a break. So we think data engineering is going to be like an SRE-like job.